A student carries out a number of experiments on transition metal compounds. 4.800 grams of a green hydrated crystalline solid A are heated in a crucible to remove the water of crystallization. 1.944 grams of water are removed to leave 0.0180 moles of solid residue B. Solid B contains 32.8% by mass of the transition metal. All of B is reacted with silver nitrate to form 7.695 grams of a white precipitate C. The green crystalline solid A is dissolved in water to produce a green solution containing a complex ion D. When aqueous sodium hydroxide is added to solution of D, a grey-green precipitate E is observed, which dissolves in excess aqueous sodium hydroxide to form a green solution. Part A. Determine the formula of A, B, D and E. Show all your working. Firstly, using our tests for ions, we know that if we react something with silver nitrate and produce a white precipitate, we're going to have chloride ions present. So we can use this information to help us work out the formula of B. So what we need to do to start with is work out the moles of C. And C is going to be silver chloride, so AgCl. And to work out the moles of this silver chloride, we can do 7.695 divided by 108 plus 35.5. And that gives us 0 0.05362 moles of silver chloride. So the equation triangle we've used is the equation triangle of mass divided by moles times relative formula mass. And this is the equation triangle we're going to be using throughout this question. Next, we need to look at the molar ratio. So 0 0.018 moles of solid residue B has formed 0 0.05362 moles of chloride ions. So we can work out how much chlorine is in B by doing 0.05362 divided by 0.0180. And that gives us three chloride ions. So next, we're going to use the equation triangle to work out the relative formula mass of B. And we're going to use mass divided by moles. So that's going to be 4.8 minus 1.944. That gives us our mass of B, which is going to be 2.856 grams. And we've worked this out using the two masses we're given in the question, where we're told that solid A, we heat it up and we remove the water and we're left with B. So minusing the two masses is going to give us the mass of B. So next, using the equation triangle, we're going to do 2.856 divided by 0 0.0180 because that's the moles of B. And that gives us the relative formula mass of B of 158.7 grams per mole. And we know we've got three chlorines. So we do 158.7 minus 3 times 35 0.5, that's the relative formula mass of three chlorines, and that's going to equal 52.2 grams per mole, which is the equivalent of chromium, or Cr. So the formula of B is CrCl3. Next, we're going to work out the moles of water. And by working out the moles of water, we can then find the formula for solid A. So using the equation triangle, we're going to do 1.944 divided by 16 plus 2. So that's the relative formula mass of water. And that equals 0 0.108 moles of water. And we can look at the molar ratio. 
and then we can use this to work out how many moles of water there is versus our solid B. So if we did 0 0.108 divided by 0 0.0180, that equals 6. So the formula for A is going to be CrCl3 dot 6H2O. So that's the waters of crystallization, there's six of them. So now we can move on to work out the formula of D and E. So D is asking you to find the formula of the complex ion when A is dissolved in water. So this formula is going to be chromium with H2O or six H2Os, and we're gonna have a three plus charge because we've lost our three chlorines. Then we're gonna work out the formula of E. So E is a gray green precipitate and we're reacting with sodium hydroxide and D. So when we react D with sodium hydroxide, we're going to form chromium OH3 or chromium hydroxide. To get the nine marks for this question, you get a mark for working out the moles of silver chloride, a mark for working out how many chloride ions there are present, a mark for working out the relative formula mass of B, a mark for working out the formula of the transition metal or the relative formula mass of the transition metal. You get a mark for working out the moles of water and you get a mark for each correct formula. Part B. Transition metal complexes often have different shapes and may form a number of stereoisomers. Describe the different shapes and the different types of stereoisomerism found in transition metal chemistry. Use suitable examples and diagrams in your answer. Let's start by drawing the three main shapes for our complex ions. If we have copper and six water ligands, we're going to form an octahedral shape. So it's important we draw it 3D and we make sure that we're connecting or bonding to the oxygen and not the hydrogen. So here I'm just completing the 3D diagram and then we're going to have square brackets around the complex and it's going to have a 2 plus charge. So this is octahedral. So next we're going to draw a tetrahedral arrangement with water ligands. And that's where we're going to have four water ligands. So again, 3D and making sure we're bonding to the oxygen and not the hydrogen in our water. We're going to have square brackets again, but this time our charge is going to be two minus. And this is called tetrahedral. Finally, we're going to have a square planar arrangement and that's where all of our bonds are going to be wedges and it only happens for D8 transition metals. So here I'm drawing the cis arrangement of cis platin. So we're going to have two ammonias on the same side and two chlorines on the same side and there's no overall charge. So this is our cis arrangement but we also have a trans arrangement where you have them on opposite sides. So we'll have a chlorine and an ammonia, making sure we're bonding to the nitrogen and the ammonia, not the hydrogen. And then we're gonna have a chlorine and an ammonia. And this will be our trans arrangement, where the groups are gonna be on opposite sides. So that's going to mean our chlorine and our ammonia groups. So we can have an ammonia here and here, making sure that our bond is from the nitrogen and not the hydrogen, and then our chlorines on the opposite sides. So this is our trans arrangement. So square planar has cis and trans stereoisomerism, but octahedral also has cis and trans stereoisomerism. For this question, you don't need to demonstrate both the square planar and octahedral cis trans isomerism, but for the purposes of closure, I am going to show them. So octahedral cis and trans, if we have octahedral, let's draw its 3D generic arrangement 
and then we're going to have another one. So one will be cis and one will be trans. So our cis, we're going to have on the same side our groups and the trans will be on opposite sides. So starting with our cis, we can have OH2 or water on the same side and then we need a different ligand for the rest of our complex. So this could be ammonia. So this is our cis arrangement because our water ligands are on the same side. But our trans would have them on the opposite side. So we could have water here and here. And then the rest of our complex will have our ammonia as our ligands, making sure that we're bonding to the nitrogen and the oxygens. And then just to finish, put our overall charge of 2 plus on both arrangements. The last isomerism we need to talk about is optical isomerism. And this occurs when you have a bidentate ligand. So if we have chromium, we can have two chlorines and then two bidentate ligands. So a bidentate ligand is when you have two lone pairs that can bond to your central metal ion. So if we have two NH2 groups, then they're both going to have lone pairs that can donate to your central metal ion and form a dative covalent bond. So we're going to have square brackets and a 2 plus charge. This is our first isomer. And then the second isomer is going to be the mirror image. And that is what an optical isomer is. So here we're drawing our 3D arrangement of an octahedral uh, complex ion. We're going to have our chlorines as the mirror image and then our bidentate ligands, making sure that we've got the nitrogen bonding to the chromium and not the hydrogens on our bidentate ligands. So then to complete, we need our two plus overall charge. This is a level response question. So there aren't set marking points, but in order to get the six marks, you must have linked together the names of the shapes and their 3D arrangements and the two different types of isomerism with correct labels and examples.